Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded any videos, uh, pardon me for that, but I'm back and I'm about to share a new video where I actually use AI to help tell the full story that I was envisioning in my head. AI has been out for a very long time. There are different versions and variations of AI and depending on what you want to achieve, there is going to be a specific AI model that's going to help you achieve that to the fullest. And when I had this idea, I was already using um, Photoshop beta because that's the only way you could access Google Gemini and Flux Context Pro. But as of today, we have Nano Banana right inside Photoshop 2026. So if you don't have Photoshop 2026, I highly recommend that you download that right now and use that as a tool to help shape your visuals a lot better. Because when I had this idea, there were two ways that I felt I could have achieved it. And this is just not going to apply to this particular image, but it's actually going to apply to several photo shoots I'm gonna be doing in the future, where now I can either weigh the options and say, do I want to build this on location or do I want to augment my um, images in post? So for example, we've been used to Photoshop and the ability to maybe improve our images by doing some blemish removal, um, cleaning unwanted people in our frames and basically fine tuning the images the way that we want. AI is a tool that is also up to us to use um, wisely to get us the results that you were looking for, right? Again, if you want to capture images the same way we transferred from film to digital, I know that there was a lot of conversations about film ph photographers being more of the true photographers versus digital photographers. But right now, there are so many cameras out there in the hands of so many people who are doing amazing with it because they were able to utilize the tool. In the same way, when we're moving from DSLR to mirrorless, a lot of people were saying that mirrorless photographers are lazy photographers because they're not going through the process, they're not involved in taking the picture because there's eye tracking where you don't have to focus and recompose and really frame your shot the way you want. But right now, mirrorless cameras are the future and it's allowing us to create the stories that we're envisioning a lot faster with a lot less hindrances so that we can focus on the creative part. And I see AI to be the same thing, that it's helping us create a lot faster and get the results that we're imagining a lot faster. Because for example, if I'm inspired to do something and I know that it's going to take me about 10 hours to do in Photoshop, I may not even go that route at all because I don't want to spend that much time in post just trying to achieve this thing that I would probably appreciate on my own. But now that we have AI, we're able to generate these concepts a lot faster, render them faster, and actually even get several variations within minutes to see what direction that we truly want to take our images. And I feel like with that, we have more power, more access, and the ability to truly imagine worlds and create them and tell better stories with our visuals. All right, I know I'm rambling a lot. Let me not deviate too much. There's going to be a little behind the scenes showing you how I got this image. And I'm also gonna to talk to you a little bit about the things that I did on set in preparation for the post-production work that I was going to do on this image. So for example, I knew in my head that I wanted the model to be wrapped in fabric and we just wrapped her around with it. We styled her basically in the outfit that she's wearing. And I knew that I wanted her to be sitting on a little shallow pool of water. And now I know that if I had to construct this in my studio, I had to be extremely careful because if there's any leakage, my living room is going to be flooded. So that was caution number one. Caution number two, if I needed to prop up a mini pool inside my living room, there are things that I may have to rent or things I may have to buy, which is going to be extra money leaving my pocket. And this is something that I am doing for myself. And so if I can save any money that I can, I definitely will go the route of saving where I can. <laughs> Hi! Hi. <laughs> are you doing? I'm good. Amazing. So amazing to have you in the studio again. Yes, 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 yes. I love the shoot that we did the previous time and I'm happy that we are trying a new concept yet again. And I love this gold fabric that you're draped in. It's really working well with the black fabric on the floor and the contrast of the backdrop. This is what we use in our previous shoot as well. I think this is like my favorite backdrop now. Like the contrast of colors, it's really amazing. But let me walk you through our lights. So for this one, we have our Amoran 120 dome and I'm using a 300C light as our main light. And I have a grid on there because I want that to focus the lights just on our model. I don't want it to spill onto the backdrop because I want it to be a little bit moody. You'll see why in a second. I mean, when we finalize the image. And then I have my second light, which is Explore 400 going through the seven foot umbrella. And that is just reducing the contrast that this light is creating, making it soft and a little bit airy. So 
Um, I'm just gonna do like a diagram of everything and then I'll also show you the results as well. I could have actually just made her lie on the canvas backdrop that is on the floor but it wasn't dark enough and I decided to use a black fabric ripple it up a little bit so that there's a little bit of shine and shadow and light and dark almost like creating ripples with the fabric and so I knew that by considering all of this I'm preparing my images properly um, to enhance it with AI in post right so let me just walk you through my lighting setup so you'd see over here that I have my Amaran um, Octadome 120 and it's coming from, let me change the color of my brush. So this is a simple two light setup, right? You can see the Octa right here and that is throwing some directional light this way towards that model. And the reason why I have it positioned that way is she was going to be leaning in that direction and because her face is the most interesting uh, thing in the frame, I wanted that to be closer to my light source so that I know that I am illuminating her the way that I want. If I had her light the other way, it means that her face would have been far away from the light and that is not what I wanted. I wanted to create a bit of contrast of light or I wanted to create depth by having her face being the brightest part of the frame and then everything just falls into shadow. But when I did that and also added a grid, what that grid was doing was focusing the light just on here. So it wasn't reaching the background as much so that we're creating this pop of light just around my model, making her the most interesting thing to look at in the frame. But when I took my first shot, I quickly realized that it was a little too moody because again, we were not getting a lot of a wrap around around here. And so I added a second light and that second light was modified with my seven foot shoot through umbrella and that was behind me. So I was standing in front of that light and because of how big it is, it was just filling everywhere. So my main light is an LED by the way. And then behind me, I had my Flashpoint 400 strobe, which is firing pulses of light freezing that motion and helping me create crisp images. I've been saying this that because these lights or these LEDs are not extremely powerful, there is going to be a little bit of vibration in you when you click the shutter and that just adds a little bit of shake and so it reduces the sharpness. Even if you're at one over 200, one over 400, there is going to be a little bit of motion blur because the light lingers on and it doesn't freeze the motion. But adding the flash, did two things for me. So it filled the frame with a fill light, but then because it's also a pulsing light, it helped me freeze the motion and it helped me create this crisp, sharp image, right? So if I'm standing here, right? If this is my camera right here, that octa was behind me somewhere like that. And that was just spreading a lot of light, filling the entire frame and reducing the shadow amount that was being created by my contrasty and rather focused main light. All right, let me just go to one of the raw files I have imported inside Photoshop. And then we're going to analyze this basically and see how the raw image was captured. And now go and show you the prompts that I basically used to create the water effects and how I finalized the image, All right? So I kept this wide frame and you can see that we have the black fabric on the floor. I didn't care that it wasn't spreading all around. I would have loved if I was able to get it all around, but my fabric was small. And so I just did what I could do with the fabric, knowing that I can augment or shape it in post with AI. Now my background was also not reaching um, the entire frame that I was capturing. And so I, I think I cropped it down a little bit and then used the content aware tool to remove all those unwanted pieces before rendering in Nano Banana, right? So now let me show you the final image. So this is the final image. And if I zoom in to 100%, you can see that it's still sharp. This is a very sharp image. And you'd be wondering how I was able to do that because we all know that AI doesn't have a lot of resolution. And so when you're rendering, it does take a beat or a hit on the resolution that you captured. But here's the case I was able to maintain that resolution in this image, right? So I'm gonna hide all these layers. And as you can see, this is the raw image that I added or enhanced with AI, right? Now, 
if I turn this on, this you can see is the first level of adjustment that I made. And over here, what I did was just to create the pool of water plus the reflections. And the prompt I used is over here. Make the girl and the clothes be sitting on dark, shallow water with little ripples on the surface. Keep her face and clothes the same. And by typing that, this is what AI did. If I zoom in a little bit, we can see that this is what it did. Obviously it's done things like change her hand position. It also did not really align with her if I hide this adjustment. So this is everything that the AI brought back. If I zoom into her face, you can see that it has taken a beating. So this is before, you can see how sharp the details are. Her, her eyelashes, her hair, her lips. You can see all those details in her earrings and things like that. But in the full render, you can see that it's a lot softer. So what you will notice on my layer is that there is a layer mask. So on the layer mask, I have painted um, my model back out and I also added this fabric. Initially, when Anu Banana did a render for me, it did not add this fabric. You can see it got rid of it, even though it did create the pool of water and the little ripples. But again, it did change some elements of my image and I did not want that. So I just use a mask and painted that back. And you can see immediately, if I zoom into a jewelry, for example, this is before, you can see how soft and undetailed it is. And here I've painted back my original image. So this was the first thing that I did, right? Then on my other layers, what I did was basically just remove the hand that this created over here. You can see I removed it just by painting out or using the remove tool to get rid of that. And then also remove the line that was right here because I felt I didn't, it wasn't really adding to the shot. So I just took that portion out. So now that we have our water our base, right? The next thing I did was to add the splashes and those little raindrops that I so much love. And so I created on top of that. And that is why before that I created a smart object so that I can keep all the adjustments separately and then now build on top of that because I wanted to merge everything down and I did not want to just create uh, another layer on top of that. I just wanted to make sure that everything is condensed and then I just have a few layers that are visible in my working layer. So if I show you the prompt that I use for the ripples of water, what I asked it to do is add slight drizzle to the scene, keep the model exactly as she is, let the drizzle create a few ripples on the water. And that was the basic prompt that I used. And again, after I did that, this is what it did. You can see that it's added like some raindrops, to the top which i actually love to be honest because obviously that's how it's going to make sense that you're seeing these drops of water you know down on the water that she's lying on but i felt it wasn't really necessary and i wanted to get rid of that because i feel this just adds a bit more interest because it's more intriguing right because you're wondering how are these drops happening where is it happening from what's causing it and it just creates visual texture and interest in the image and in, in this case even though it got rid of this fabric that i painted back i actually did not mind the fact that it had gotten rid of it i feel like it just made more sense this way because it feels like that part has been swallowed in the water and it just made sense in this case i actually love it it doesn't really take away so much from the image and this is actually my final result so if i go back into capture one and show you the other images that i got as well I basically use these two same prompts to generate the rest of the image. So this is what we've been looking at so far inside um, Photoshop. In Capture One, what I did was just color grade a bit and added a bit of noise or grain just to enhance it a little bit. So this is another render which I made as well. And again, I use the same prompts. I just copied the prompts and pasted it um, in different sections. So the first one obviously is just to create a pool of water. And the second one is to create the splashes and then I'll paint my model out of that. And then also paint away the raindrops that are going across my frame. And the same with this image as well. For this, I just decided to include a bit more splashes just because of how dramatic the ripples were. I felt if I didn't add the splashes, it would have taken away from it. And so that is how I was able to get this. And then one one of my favorite images also this one i feel like the drops are really aggressive but i love the way she's positioned i love her shape i love the drapery in the fabric everything just makes sense and that is how i was able to use ai to get these images i wouldn't have been able to get it any other way and i absolutely love the way it came out for this i actually painted the fabric um, down here 
back into the frame and i feel for this it makes more sense because i took my time to do that and now we have like a lot of variety in the different images that we've been able to create we also have this shoot coming i am working on the bts and so i hope to release that soon so if you haven't subscribed to the channel now would be a good time for you to subscribe i plan on adding a lot of floral elements to the shots just to see what i get with it i haven't played with it just yet but i will soon so stay tuned subscribe again if you haven't also check out my digital store i do have amazing products that will help you retouch faster like my workflow actions and i have some color grading tools and presets for capture one and for photoshop so do check it out and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one i know it's been a long time so i'm a little bit all over the place in this video but i promise i'm going to get better again as i start creating more videos i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for tuning in and staying this long in the video um, leave a like if you enjoyed it and then let me know your thoughts about ai and how it's going to help shape our creative future